the animal kingdom. A remarkable collection of living, breathing natural wonders. Enthralling. Impressive. Tenacious. And nurturing. Innovative. Tough. Surprising. Always genuine. Discover their past, present, and future. Just breathtaking. Just intriguing. Just tremendous. Just animals. Reptiles. Creatures that can simultaneously evoke fear and wonder. Scaly, alien-like skin. Cold, vacant stares. Raw energy. Qualities that often induce a negative perception of them. Yet, there is more to this ancient group than their tough, formidable exterior suggests. Reptiles can be nurturing, delicate, and vulnerable. This exploration of the reptilian world focuses on the dominant group, the squamates, which includes lizards and snakes. Together, they account for 95% of their kind. This branch of reptiles can be found slithering and crawling throughout every continent except Antarctica, their cold-blooded nature restricting them from this region. Snakes and lizards have conquered both terrestrial and aquatic environments. With more than 10,000 species on record, they are a rich, diverse crowd. Among them, devils, monsters, and dragons. Fantastical names for amazing members of this striking group of animals. like feathers are to birds, and fur is to mammals. Scales are the telltale feature of reptiles. These three groups, plus amphibians and fish, are all vertebrates, animals with backbones, which represent about 5% of the world's creatures. To be classed as a reptile, a vertebrate must have skin that is covered by scales. Or bony plates known as scutes. Or have a combination of the two. Female reptiles have the ability to produce eggs with either leathery or hard shells. Finally, this type of animal is ectothermic, 
meaning they cannot control their body temperature. Instead, they rely on their environment to warm up or cool down. Class Reptilia is comprised of four subgroups or orders. Crocodiles and alligators belong to the crocodilians. Another group are the testudines, which include turtles and tortoises. Next is New Zealand's Tuatara. While lizard-like in appearance, they are unique. The sole members of their order. Finally, the largest order, squamata, a Latin term that means having scales. This group is comprised of lizards, snakes, and worm lizards. Although there are thousands of squamates, they all share two characteristics. Firstly, these reptiles all regularly shed their skin. Snakes shed theirs as one piece. In contrast, lizards molt in patches. Secondly, the jaws of squamates are joined to their skulls in a unique way, which enables them to open their mouths widely, allowing them to devour big prey items. Of the three suborders of squamates, lizards have the highest diversity, with more than six and a half thousand species, according to a recent estimate. To get around, lizards have four limbs. Their heads are small, supported by short necks. Lizards have movable eyelids and external ear openings. Overall, a lizard's body and tail are long. Of all lizards, the Komodo dragon of Indonesia is the biggest. Adults can reach three meters, longer than a large motorcycle. Some of their smallest relatives include dwarf geckos, like this electric blue species from Tanzania, plus leaf chameleons, which are found in Madagascar. The next suborder is called Serpentes, the snakes. There are approximately three and a half thousand known species. Being legless is an obvious point of difference between them and lizards. To move around, they undulate their long bodies. Eyelids are absent, and while a snake cannot close its eyes, they are protected by a transparent spectacle scale. Compared to lizards, their jaws are incredibly flexible. A series of muscles, tendons, and elastic ligaments allow them to spread wide apart. Forked tongues are seen on all snakes but only in some types of lizards. As for toxicity, about 15% of snakes are venomous, say one in six. In comparison, that number is approximately one in 65 with lizards. Due to its length to weight ratio, South America's giant anaconda rules the snake world stretching out between six to nine meters and measuring about 250 kilograms. That's similar to 20 bars of gold. At the other end of the scale is the Barbados thread snake, 
as thin as spaghetti and a mere 10 centimeters in length. The third suborder of squamates are the worm lizards, a relatively small group with approximately 170 species. Worm lizards usually have long bodies that either have reduced limbs or none at all. These burrowers grow to a maximum length of about 15 centimeters. Together, the three types of squamates make up one of the most fascinating groups in the animal kingdom. Like any type of animal, the squamates have been classed or divided into smaller groups. There are roughly 58 families of these reptiles. On the lizard side, one well-known family are the monitors, which can be found in Africa, Asia, and Australasia. Like snakes, monitors have forked tongues and produce venom. This is a Parenti, Australia's largest lizard, reaching up to two meters in length. They inhabit arid regions amongst rocky terrain. Monitors are known for their size. The largest lizards in the world belong to this family. The leader of the pack is the formidable Komodo dragon. One of their closest relatives lives across the Pacific in the deserts of southwestern America and northern Mexico. The Gila monster, a type of beaded lizard. Weighing about two kilograms, these chunky reptiles are slow moving. Their brightly patterned bodies are covered in unusual bead-like scales called osteoderms. Like their monitor cousins, Gila monsters are venomous. Glands in their lower jaw produce toxin, which flows through the grooves in their teeth into their prey. The next group are the Iguanias, which include chameleons, agamids, and iguanas. Iguanas are herbivorous reptiles native to the tropical zones of the Americas. These marine iguanas from the Galapagos Islands are demonstrating why groups of lizards are sometimes called a lounge. Agamids are found throughout Asia, Africa and Australia. Many of these lizards have keeled scales Instead of being smooth, they have a ridge down the center. Crested backs and throat flaps are other common agamid features. As for their chameleon cousins, they have vivid patterns, mesmerizing eyes, unusual feet, and lightning fast tongues. Most species are found in Africa and Madagascar. Next, the skinks, which have a wide distribution around the world. The majority of this group are covered in shiny, smooth, overlapping scales, have eyelids that move, and wide, fleshy tongues, which this Australian blue tongue lizard is freely demonstrating. This is a close cousin, a shingleback lizard. Its scales make it look like a pine cone on legs. One final lizard family are the geckos. Lizards with flat bodies, flat heads, and short necks. They inhabit all continents except Antarctica. Many species have fused eyelids 
Their tongues often glide over their eyes like mini windscreen wipers. The Dominican Republic is home to the Yaragua gecko. Measuring 16 millimeters, it's one of the smallest lizards on Earth. In terms of petite size, its equivalent in the snake world is six times larger. Thread snakes are a type of blind snake, a little known group comprised of three families. Similar in appearance to earthworms, these non-venomous burrowing snakes can be found in tropical and subtropical regions. The rest of their kind belong to the true snakes. Of them, colubrids are the largest family. About three quarters of all snakes belong to this clan. Colubrids are solid-toothed, rear-fanged snakes. Due to their unsophisticated venom delivery system, many are considered harmless. They can be found in a wide range of habitats. In sub-Saharan Africa, egg-eater snakes spend their time up in trees or on the ground, looking for the contents of birds' nests. This glossy, brightly banded reptile is a coral pipe snake, or false coral snake, which can be found slithering through tropical regions of South America. It is the only species of its kind. In contrast, there are more than 30 species of pythons. These non-venomous snakes can be found in Asia, Africa, and Australia. Pythons are bulky, slow-moving animals with triangular-shaped heads and backward curving teeth, ideal for grabbing food. Carpet pythons have earthy-toned blotches to blend in with the undergrowth. While green tree pythons rely on their vibrant lime scales to disappear into their leafy surroundings. Many species can reach considerable lengths, yet all of them use their long bodies to coil around their prey and constrict or squeeze them. The New World hosts another family of constricting snakes, the boas, which include anacondas, boa constrictors, and tree boas. While similar to pythons, boas are generally smaller and come into the world as live-born babies, rather than via an egg. Here, a gaping boa constrictor shows off its flexible jaws. Elsewhere, a different genre of snake is flexing its mouth. This is a death adder, a type of elapid. Elapids are venomous snakes, characterized by a set of hollow, permanently erect fangs that are used to inject toxin. These reptiles are found throughout the tropics. In general, elapids are active creatures that have long, thin bodies covered in smooth scales. King cobras come with a special accessory, a hood, loose neck skin that flares out to create a formidable display to ward off threats. Sea snakes are an unusual type of elapid that spend most of their lives in marine environments. Their paddle-like tails and flattened bodies make these venomous reptiles look a bit like eels. While elapids have fixed fangs, those on a viper are long and hinged, able to move. A handler gently shows this action. Vipers are found in many parts of the world and typically have stocky bodies and wide heads. Rattlesnakes are well-known members of this family. 
Their famous tail tip is made of keratin, the same substance in claws, hair and feathers. Muscles in the tail tip shake the segments in the rattle up to 90 times a second to create a noisy buzz to scare off any perceived threats. Innovative, eye-catching, and at times daunting. Together, snakes and lizards are an impressive branch of the animal kingdom. When it comes to survival, every creature relies on a combination of instincts, adaptations, and special skills to improve their chances. Reptiles have literally got themselves covered. For lizards and snakes, scales are their first line of defense. Their entire skin is encased by a layer of overlapping scales, which are comprised of keratin, a fibrous structural protein. This natural coat of armor protects them from UV rays, scratches from rough surfaces they travel over, and keeps them watertight. Many reptiles use their appearance as a form of protection. By adapting the color and patterns of their scales to match their environment, they can safely hide in plain sight. Natural camouflage can shield them from predators and prey alike. Should their disguise fail, some have a backup plan. Many lizard species, such as geckos and skinks, can drop their tails in order to evade a predator, an ability known as caudal autotomy. The severed tip serves as a decoy, giving the rest of the reptile a chance to escape and time for its tail to regenerate. Spitting cobras will also take drastic measures to defend themselves. If threatened, they can contract the muscles around their venom glands and spit toxin, with the aim to blind their attacker. In addition, cobras will extend their hood when frightened, an example of a startle display. The Australian frilled neck lizard is famous for putting on this type of intimidating show. Being cold-blooded or ectothermic means reptiles tend to exist in warm climates. With that, comes the need to conserve water. Their scaly skin helps them reduce moisture loss. One desert dweller, the Australian thorny devil, is able to use its prickly exterior to soak up water. Minute channels in between their scales draw water up via capillary action, funneling it towards their mouth. Depending on which group they belong to, squamates have a number of locomotive styles. Lizards crawl, using their diagonally opposite feet at the same time. Legless lizards use their sides to push themselves along the ground. And snakes use their sides and belly scales to move. One reptile that prefers to soar is the Draco flying lizard from Southeast Asia. Their wings are created by folds of skin and a set of elongated ribs. To take off, these scaly aviators extend and unfurl their flaps, then launch. Reptiles may not be seen flying that often, but they constantly do this. 
When they flick out their tongues, snakes and lizards are collecting odors, chemicals from the air and ground. Their tongues don't have taste or smell receptors. Instead, they're inserted into a special section in their nasal cavity called the Jacobson's organ that senses any odor particles. In terms of hearing, snakes do not have ears, but they do listen by placing their lower jaw on the ground to sense vibrations. In this way, they can determine the size and location of any nearby prey. In contrast, lizards have ears, yet no visible ear flaps. Compared to snakes, lizards have better hearing. Their eyesight is also superior. Studies have shown their color vision surpasses that of humans, which makes sense as the majority of lizards use colors to communicate and make decisions. The cone-shaped eyes on chameleons are particularly interesting, as each one can move independently and swivel in all directions. Many reptiles, such as lizards and tuataras, come equipped with a third eye, a small indentation on the top of their head. Known as a parietal eye, they are a cluster of light-sensitive cells that can determine small changes in brightness. Should a predator pass overhead and cast a shadow, the third eye will detect it. Certain snakes can see in the dark via these pits on the side of their head. These pit organs sense heat, infrared radiation, allowing snakes to hone in on warm-blooded prey. It's adaptations like these that give reptiles the edge, no matter where they choose to dwell. Reptiles have been roaming the planet for eons. Their origin traces back to the water, with creatures like this. Between five and 400 million years ago, fish were the dominant vertebrates. In simple terms, the next step towards modern reptiles were the tetrapods, or land-living vertebrates. Among them were primitive amphibians, from them came reptile-like creatures such as Hilonymus, which existed about 312 million years ago. They're believed to be some of the first animals fully adapted to life on land. By producing eggs with shells and having tough skin that protected them from moisture loss, these beings were less reliant on water and could venture further afield into drier habitats. Next, this group branched off into early mammals and reptiles. At this stage in history, reptiles thrived. There were several offshoots, such as turtles, lizards and snakes, plus archosaurs. The archosaurs themselves split into crocodiles, flying reptiles, or pterosaurs, and dinosaurs. Out of the squamates, lizards emerged first. The earliest fossils dating back 220 million years. A million years later, snakes began to appear. The oldest fossils being discovered in ancient oceans, leading experts to theorize that snakes evolved from aquatic lizards. Boas and pythons are considered to be the most primitive of living snakes. Evidence of their lizard ancestry can be found towards their tail end. Small hind leg bones hidden within the muscles, vestiges of their past. In the modern world, the enigmatic tuatara is the closest relative to lizards and snakes. These reptiles are the last of an ancient line whose ancestors trace back 
to the Jurassic Age. Another type of creature with ancestral links to reptiles are birds, which are thought to have emerged from a line of dinosaurs. Like reptiles, birds are vertebrates, lay amniotic eggs with shells, and have scales on their bodies. Out of all reptiles, crocodiles have the closest ties to birds. The reptilian family tree is not based on a single common ancestor. It's more like a bunch of entwined vines, which have, over time, resulted in the diverse range of scaly-skinned animals we know today. To succeed in any given environment, an animal's instincts play a vital role as do a wide range of behaviours. One behaviour reptiles exhibit on a daily basis is basking. Not being able to internally thermoregulate, reptiles rely on the sun's heat to raise their body temperature, giving them energy to carry out essential activities such as hunting and defence. Additionally, soaking up rays helps lizards and snakes to produce vitamin D, which they need for healthy growth and strong bones. To avoid danger or search for food, lizards have an obvious means of transport. Being legless, however, doesn't limit snakes. Swimming, is another talent displayed by snakes and lizards. Water dragons have flat, muscly tails that propel them along. Lakes and ponds offer these lizards refuge. If needed, they can dive in and remain submerged for an hour or longer. Coral reefs in the Western Pacific often host olive sea snakes. When swimming, this graceful marine species pushes its one large lung to the limit. A trip to the surface for a breath will give them hours of time underwater. Generally speaking, reptiles are solitary animals. Breeding being the usual reason they'll come together and socialize. In terms of vocal communication, the majority of snakes and lizards are quiet creatures. When threatened or stressed, hissing is a common type of defensive behavior. It can be coupled with body language. A hissing snake coiled back into the curved strike position, sends a strong, clear message. A rattlesnake uses its tail to enhance this menacing warning. In contrast, male geckos bark or chirp to stake out territory, or to communicate with potential partners. If a chameleon wants to attract a mate, some males are able to put on a colourful show to express their intentions. This, along with mood and temperature, are some of the reasons why chameleons change their colour. Not, as the widespread myth would have it, to match their environment. Chameleons are able to change colour thanks to two layers in their skin. The first contains pigments. Below that is a layer of cells with guanine crystals that reflect and scatter visible light, like tiny prisms. The chameleon's nervous system can change the amount of space between the crystals. When relaxed, the cells stay close together, reflecting short wavelengths, such as blues or greens. A rush of excitement or stress pushes the cells apart causing them to reflect longer wavelengths, like yellows and reds.
Another quirky trait of chameleons is how they walk. They have a slow, rocking gait. It's thought they do this to break up their outline. By mimicking leaves moving in the breeze, this behavior helps to keep them safe. A good example of how slow and steady can be a winning combination in the never-ending game of survival. One thing all animals are naturally driven to accomplish during the course of their lives is to replace themselves. The majority of snakes and lizards deliver their next generation into the world via an egg. Species that reproduce in this manner are called oviparous. Many types of chameleons are oviparous. Females laying their eggs three to six weeks after breeding. Depending on the species, it can take four to 24 months for a clutch to incubate. For a Laborde's chameleon, life moves fast. In two months, these independent babies will be breeding adults. Their entire life only spanning the four to five months of the Madagascan rainy season. Not all lizards have such short lives. The Komodo dragon has the longest, able to survive for about 70 years. In general, snakes have shorter lifespans. These baby inland taipans have eight to 10 years to explore the arid regions of Australia. Albumen, bubbles and oozes from the broken shells. This liquid being the developing baby's nutrient and moisture supply. Once free of their leathery casing, a newly emerged taipan measures about 47 centimeters. By adulthood, they'll be four times that size. Not all reptilian eggs are abandoned by their mother. This python has turned itself into a scaly nest. Her coils keeping the developing eggs warm while she guards them from predators. Some reptiles, like death adders, are oviviparous. Instead of depositing their eggs, mothers incubate them internally, then give birth to live young. With death adders, that commonly happens in late summer. When fully grown, they'll be approximately a meter in length. In the wild, they can survive for up to 15 years. The longest living snakes are boas. They can exist for two decades. While impressive, other reptiles easily outshine them longevity-wise. Tuataras can survive for more than 60 years. The largest reptiles of all Saltwater crocodiles are known to lurk waterways for seven decades. Out of all land animals, giant tortoises come out on top. Slowly but surely, these massive reptiles can plod about their remote tropical island homes for one and a half centuries. Food is the fuel of life. And reptiles, being a diverse group, enjoy a wide range of diets.
Marine iguanas are strict herbivores, plant eaters, that dine on algae growing on rocks along the shore and below the waterline. Reptiles can also enjoy a mixed diet. Land mullets inhabit lush rainforests, which provide a continual buffet for these large Australian skinks. Many lizards and all snakes are carnivores. Thorny devils get their fix of protein from ants. They can eat thousands on a daily basis. To catch a meal, chameleons rely on their sticky tongues, which can be as long or longer than their body. Diet-wise, eggs are a good option for reptiles. No chasing is required, and they're relatively easy to steal. This nest of massive emu eggs should satisfy this parentes appetite. As long as it's meat, Komodo dragons are not picky eaters. This one has located a carcass. Whether it's carrion or a fresh kill, Komodos can gulp down 80% of their body weight in one session. Venom is a substance often associated with snakes, despite the fact that only a sixth of their kind are venomous. This noxious fluid is a special type of saliva that contains natural toxins. When injected into prey via hollow fangs, this substance immobilizes the animal and starts the digestive process. Some species use constriction to secure a meal. When attacking, they bite and hold their prey, then coil around them and squeeze until the heart stops beating. No matter how they obtain food, the next step is to swallow it. To do this, a snake opens wide and gradually shunts its lower jaw over the prey, backward curving teeth gripping it, helping to walk it down. Within their chosen habitat, reptiles play a number of roles. They can be both predator and prey. Apart from making contributions to the food chain, the eating habits of snakes and lizards help an ecosystem stay balanced by keeping population numbers in check. Carnivorous species also provide natural pest control. Plant eaters are excellent at seed dispersal. A sample of the many ways reptiles, big and small, assist in the maintenance of healthy, robust environments. Since early times, reptiles have attracted attention and captured the imagination. Some inspiring myths, others becoming cultural symbols. Around the world, snakes mean different things. The Hopi people of North America danced with snakes in an annual fertility ritual that asked the spirits for rain. Afterwards, they released the reptiles into their fields to ensure good harvests. The Ouroboros dates back to ancient times, 
a symbol of infinity, eternity, and the continual cycle of life. The Hindu deity, Shiva, lord of the animals, is commonly depicted wearing a garland of snakes. As snakes have a fearsome, dangerous reputation, this necklace affirms Shiva's power and control over them and every other creature. Some reptiles have been credited with supernatural powers. In parts of Africa, chameleons are feared, some believing they can collect fire from the sun. In India, snakes are seen as good luck. The ancient art of snake charming began in this region. Snakes are not always seen in a positive light. In the Bible, they're painted as cunning liars for tempting Eve in the Garden of Eden. Their supposed evil, sneaky ways have been featured in ancient fables through to modern literature and films, where they've been depicted terrorizing passengers on planes and young wizards. In the real world, reptilian venom has real medicinal value, such as the use of antivenins to neutralize toxins in snake bites. Researchers have identified a compound in Gila monster venom that naturally increases insulin production, which could potentially help diabetes patients. Whether they are fictional villains or heroes of science, these scaly creatures that share our world are curiously appealing. Out of the vertebrates, reptiles do not always get the highest popularity rating. Gaining a better understanding of their behavior and biology allows many to see past the unfortunate stigma that's often attached to these fascinating creatures. With greater awareness, what was once seen as slimy, vicious, or frightening can now be admired, appreciated, and respected. Despite their hardy, scaly exteriors and long history, the modern world exposes reptiles to a number of challenges, such as habitat loss, pollution, and changes in climate. Hunting and overcollection also put stress on reptilian populations. as do invasive species. On a global scale, it's been estimated that one in five reptiles are under threat. Among them are jeweled geckos, various species of boas, and sea snakes, a number being classed as either endangered or critically endangered. Around the world, conservation programs are having successes. By the late 1990s, invasive predators were taking their toll on Otago and Grand Skinks in New Zealand. An intensive trapping operation capturing feral cats and ferrets, plus the establishment of mammal-proof fencing saw a remarkable recovery in protected populations. In just three years, skink numbers rose by 94%. While human activity has caused issues for some reptiles, others show remarkable adaptability. Many species of snakes and lizards thrive in urban environments. For example, Geckos are common house guests in warmer parts of the world. Anywhere reptiles exist, simple actions can be taken to improve their chances. 
Planting gardens and establishing parklands will encourage lizards and snakes. Reducing pollutants and lowering the demand for goods made with reptile skins are both positive steps. For a group of animals that coexisted with dinosaurs and managed to outlive them, it's the least they deserve. Apart from the invaluable role they play in the environment, lizards and snakes bring natural beauty, captivating skills, and astounding diversity to the planet we all share.